Welcome back. This is game three of the ten games of promo. I may not be here for long. <laughs> I I know I don't think I'll be here for all ten games. I said it in the first game. I'll say it again. I don't think I'll be here for all ten games, but I'll try to catch as many as I can. We return to our hero now engaged in Comet Misfortune going up against Vayne. The, uh, the spirit boss on bot lane, in fact, actually. I will say, for the record, that stress skin will never fail to creep me out. Alright, the top lane matchup is going to be Irelia against Warwick, a very fringe pick to punish certain top laners, but uh, truly annoying, like un timelessly annoying. It's going to be Kane against the Sin Zhao in the jungle, Echo mid, not something you see very commonly, most Echoes do not go laning anymore, against the Lux. And the bot lane matchup is, as previously stated, the Spirit Blossom bot lane against MF Seraphine. Speaking of Seraphine, I uh, I was at work today, and on the other screen, I played some music just to uh, access some background noise, and I was listening to KDA songs, mostly because they just popped up on the autoplay. And I gotta admit, uh, more is a banger. I I do like him more than pop stars now. I used to I used to think like pop star was just like the pinnacle, and I didn't really like more or villains that much. But now I really like more, and I think I've realized that ever since um, Rune Terra, uh, my KDA game board, I always said to the more track. It's it's just so good that the beats are so sick and oh, the way it's produced, it's just pristine. The more I watch it, the more I appreciate just how much work went into putting putting all that together it's just marvelous it's a work of art really it's it's a masterpiece regardless we are setting into games three kda aside Pretty standard opening now. Oh, Sinjao, don't get greedy. <laughs> a few more steps and the blue buff would have just turned back to his home. But both stronglers are going to start the blue. Uh, they're going to start boss side. Seraphine takes away the first CS. <laughs> As is tradition. Going for the beat drop level 1. It is called beat drop, right? Like I, I need to constantly make sure because I never confirmed her ability names. No, it's high note. Beat drop is E. Uh, it's high note. Yes, yes. I remember her W though. It is called surround sound because I remember like the first time I saw it, I was like, what? That's a weird name for an ability. When my, when my mind hears a, a surround sound, I just instantly connect it to like 7.1 surround sound. <laughs> Alright, Echo is going to get the first blood. Lux light binding. A little bit too far, if it was a bit closer, she might have locked up the Echo under tower and gotten him to kill back, but as it stands, Echo walks away with a solo kill at level 1. And there's the actual beat drop goes down, and Natrox, not Natrox, I keep thinking of last game, Warwick bites the Aurelia, gets all of his health back with the grass proc and more, it's just an obscene amount of healing early on in lane. And in fact, Warwick's early healing and his ability to consistently win fights with low health, well, when both players are low health, it makes him incredibly strong when picked into fighters. He, he just doesn't die and he heals all the damage back and it's just some of the most hopeless slap fights he can ever be locked up in. And he's certainly flexing his laning advantage, pressuring Aurelia here in the early lane, making sure not be able to CS. Meanwhile, the hook on the Thresh latches onto the Seraphine. Thresh wants to get her autograph for the next KDA album, but she refuses and walks away. Three and a half minutes in. A less explosive game, but uh, a game nonetheless. Warwick will be forced to flash out under the tower. As Aurelia stuns him under it. And there's the Ionian Fervor. Foley capped and Warwick doesn't have his Q up. Makes a huge mechanical mistake and gets killed off. Taken down solo in a position where he should have absolutely not died. That is going to be a huge mistake. And that's Warwick, you need to leverage your laning power here. If you fall behind in lane, it is so much harder to get going on that pick. Uh, it is a, he is a predator champion, you know, in every sense of the word. And he needs to get strong off making the enemy weak. 
And if giving a kill over to the Irelia, making her buy a Vamp Scepter for more lane sustain, it is the exact opposite of what you want, and that's a horrible start for the Warwick and lane. Meanwhile, Echo will be killed off here by the Sinjar of the mid lane. It was a pretty standard gank attempt. Kane did try to come in and help, but unfortunately it wasn't good enough. He smites away the Raptor, gets himself back to near full health. He's going to continue on with his jungle. Aurelia goes for another aggressive trade. Unfortunately, her stun misses. The Warwick is not giving up. He gets the howl off. But now he has a giant wave to farm. Meanwhile, Balling, Rain gets her kills, uh, Rain gets her CS down, and Miss Fortune's gone back for some more items. Blue team gets a cheater recall off as the wave is coming back towards them. But Rain will shove this wave in and likely do the same. She's sitting on a little bit of change, not a lot. Thresh is gonna take this moment to start roaming out. He might bump into the Echo because Echo's camping in the brush waiting for him. He's gonna face dive over the wall, that's gonna keep himself safe. Parallel Convergence for no reason. And honestly, uh, of all the three games so far, this one had the most tame early game. <laughs> the other games were had a, lot, had a lot of kills happening in the early stage. Oh, this might be one now. Seraphine gets hooked in so much damage, the Silver Bolt cannot be flashed. And Vayne gets the kill. Beautiful flash condemn. MF pops the cleanse immediately to get out, and here comes the cane. Two very low members. The flame will not get the knockback, which means that the Aatrox is still free. Aatrox, the cane still free to give chase. He's basically Aatrox, I mean, they're both darkens. Kane gets the double kill for himself, and the minions will not kill him off. Kane coming in for the cleanup effort, and unfortunately, Misfortune only got one of those assists, and here comes the Sinjao to punish the overstay. Misfortune goes for the impure bullets to try to get out and make it rain to get the slow. The poke from long range will not make it happen, but there is a Lux coming to cut her off. Oh, the cane is here as well. The light binding finishes her. Lux was a very fitting name for a Lux player. Gets the kill on the misfortune. Echo does have the chrono break, but he completely was the damage. He thought he landed the Sinja and there's the ignite going down. The final spark comes through. Massive devastation going down on the clump and blue team. They lose their mid and jungler. But they take down one. Uh, Irel killed off Warwick in a completely separate incident. But like I said, it was Warwick. If you ever if you ever give up that first kill, you're screwed. It, it's a fringe top lane pick after all. And if you ever fall behind as a fringe pick, expect to just consistently be trashed by champions that are actually supposed to go top lane. Although in higher levels, you generally see Irel mid as well. But that's beside the point. Ooh, Thresh connects. He has another death sentence onto the Seraphine. With this one, might be a trap. The B drop. The first wave hits. The second wave will not. Vayne awaits the snare. Echo going face first, parallel coverage is another dive onto the Lux, can he make it happen? He's been locked up! Oh, Lux finally gets it. She puts up the question mark, cool girls don't look at death behind them, and starts recalling as Echo gets locked up under the tower. A little bit too greedy for his own good, and he will be taken down. Do punishment. Oh, the Sinjok gets pushed back by the dragon into the back of the pit. But unfortunately, there's no punish coming off here for blue team. It would be so slick if they somehow killed him off that dragon push. But this does seem like the uh, Kane will come in to just secure position on the Drake. Unless the Lantern, the bullet time over the wall, it is melting the Thresh. He will be killed off, but uh, Sinjao secures that Drake. 
final hour is popped here by the main. She is going in for a kill. The final spark will not hit, but the Seraphine is in a lot of trouble. Parallel Convergence comes in, but the main will just barely avoid getting stunned. Send out charges over the wall to try to make it happen. Yes, he gets the misfortune kill. So overall, that's gonna be a two for two. Unfortunately for blue team though, red team walked away with the dragon secure. This echo was not able to smite it in time. Why did I say echo? I meant the cane. God damn it! Like it's been so long where I just whenever I see echo, I associate him as the jungler. I don't know why. It's been so long since I saw a solo lane echo where if I see an echo in game, I just know he's jungling. Oh, that's gonna be another slick solo kill. I rally am making the dash happen. Warwick fell for the classic. I'm backing away, except I have a resetting Q strat by the Irelia. It's, it consistently works, even though it's the most predictable strat in the book. You just don't approach her when she's dropped one of her E's. Of course, uh, faster Irelias will just catch you completely by surprise. They just instantly stun you. God, she... As much as I don't like playing against Irelia, I do admit like Irelia as a champion is so cool. Like, if there was one champ I really wanted to master to like godly level, it would be Irelia. Even before her rework, even when she was just like even when she was the better nerf Irelia version, it's, she was a champion I kept wanting to master for the longest time and I just could not get it. Her playstyle just doesn't necessarily mesh with me. I cannot ever make that champion work, but as much as I do despise playing against her, I I, I gotta admit, she's so cool. Like <laughs> One of the few fighters where I look at her, like if one of the few fighters just kills me, I just sit there and go, you know what, she earned that. <laughs> like that that was that was slick. Making those slick plays feel so good. And then I like her less and less as she just destroys my team. But there is Irelia absolutely popping off over the Warwick 4-0 against Owen 4, the puppy up uh, uh, at top lane just has no chance of surviving against the dancer. <laughs> Makes me wonder why Irelia retired from the army <laughs> after the occupation war. I mean I I know why because of lore, but she's such a good fighter. Seraphine is going to get hooked by that sentence for the 14th time this game and the bullet time will connect. This was a trap and main fell for a hook, line and sinker. She will be killed off by the bullet time and there's the death march coming in. Unfortunately for Misfortune, Seraphine secured yet another kill. 0, 2, and 4. And Seraphine has 4 kills. That's that's your new carry right there. The Misfortune honestly is just running uh, make it rain support. Kane. Oh, that's a very unnecessary flash. The third turret shot was not coming out. But uh, question mark pings go down. Kane pings his own flash. I think he know he didn't have to. But blue team, very ahead so far. 14 to 8. Echo is gonna run face first into a Sin Zhao, and Sin Zhao very easily secures the shutdown. Meanwhile, the Warwick pounces on the Aurelia's face and starts scratching it off. Did I say Aurelia? I mean Kane, but Aurelia will be killed off in a separated incident. <laughs> you can tell I'm losing grip when I'm just calling champions wrong. It happens with casters fatigue when you cast too many games in a row. You just start zoning out, and you, this, you just disassociate champions. Although in my defense, they're both blue colored champions right now. Very Two very distracting skins. But Lux is gonna get some free time here with the mid tower. And as we approach the 14 minute mark, this was a tame laning phase right up until people started dying left and right and this is just a super dead misfortune. Just flashing! Why did you flash? Did, did you need to flash that? Like, do you think that will save you? Oh, the high note from the Seraphine dunks on top of the veins head. Oh, I stand corrected. I I stand correct. I thought they were okay. I fully apologize. I didn't. 
comprehend the godly levels of play to flash and I just assumed both bot laners were dead, but then I watched Seraphine kills off Vayne and Misfortune somehow in hell gets away from the Sin Zhao by flashing under the tower. <laughs> by flashing through his tower is that was incredible. Alright, never mind. Blue team actually all survived that ordeal. Red team sends three bot and they lost one for no reason. Vayne says the Seraphine taunting her even more. The bonus time goes out. It is massive in this choke point. Killing off Sin Zhao and Warwick dies. Unrelated incidents up top. And this tower needs to die before it kills people. Chrono Break goes down, but it might be too late. No! Kane is alive. He's still still thinking he had died. No, the barrier. And the hourglass, the echo. Oh, he can't make that kill happen. He's so sad. And once again, he gets snared up under the tower. Vayne pops the final hour to try to go in, but she will not kill the singer. Seraphine, the pop star, walks away. No worse for rare, really. She's still alive. Vayne flashed in to make that happen, and she just can't get it. And that's going to make her a super easy kill here for Rast, and Rast is going to come in, miss the knockup. Might not be as easy as previously thought, but... No, he doesn't even need to ult, not like he had it. Meanwhile, Misfortune gets eaten by a dog. Very tragic, but the world will accept that and move on. And Ras turns his sights onto the dragon. Teleport for Aurelia, not available. She's still wandering around top lane. And Ras quickly realizes that this is a horrible, horrible idea. As Red Team comes in to reinforce, he's gonna pop the blast cone. Stress tried to flay him out, but couldn't get it. And Kane somehow says thank you for the leash and comes back in to take what rightfully belongs to himself. Sin Chao will die without a second thought, or without a second chance. Really, the Lux Binding secures two but doesn't kill any. Rass is gonna come in, he still wants more blood, he's healing so much, he gets the knock up with the condemn through his body. Arrow flashes in for the stun, she's locked up the vein, one more dash will do it and there it is, she kills off the vein. Red team lose dragon and a crap ton more. Sin Zhao's smite gets pinged out. Vayne calls him out for missing everything. This game. Very terrifying Aurelia up top lane. Very terrifying, terrifying Seraphine down bot. Who knew taking all your AD carries kills means you are strong? Why don't all supports do that? Just take all of their carries kills. So far this game looks like it's a total domination victory here. It's like playing Civ 5 against difficulty 1 AIs. They're just rolling over asking you to die. You send one archer next to their city gates and they just pull their pants down and surrender to you. 17 minutes in, it seems like red team is super far, like unrecoverably far behind, not just super far. Sin Zhao has the most kills on the team and he's honestly doing nothing with that lead. He's got Sunderer, but he's been thoroughly outmatched here by the Ras. He just has no chance of beating him. He finishes Blade of the Rune King, but that is a very bare looking inventory. It's two completed items, no consumables. Three vision score? <laughs> like, okay, granted Ras isn't that much better. He's at nine or seven like 20 seconds ago, but he's at nine now. But a jungler with three vision score? What are you doing? Warwick might be the next prey here for the cane, but nothing will happen. Rip Harrow 2 has spawned, and Blue Team promptly gets on it. Irel so incredibly strong. Play the Rune King complete. Is that Camp Punk? Or, like, well, that's Executioner's Calling, but is she going for Camp Punk? I've never once built Camp Punk Chainsword. I don't actually know any of its components. It seems like she's working on Thunderer, though. Seems like just be early Executioners to eventually build into... I don't think Camp Punk, but probably, like... No. It's probably kind of punk because there's no, it makes no sense for her to go mortal reminder here. Oh, Ras coming over, taking what's his, but Sin Zhao will smite the blue. Unfortunately, that means he doesn't have it to smite the Ras. The Ras is finding himself severely outmatched. He will try to run away, but the death sentence grabs him back. Echo dives in to try to save his friend, and he somehow does it here. 
The Seraphine is gonna get jumped by the vein, but the high note takes her down with Seraphine's dying breath. She still gets yet another kill. <laughs> this Fortress 1 kills 6 assists and Seraphine 6 kills. That is just utterly hilarious. Meanwhile, top lane, this is the same old dance every single time. Irelia fighting the Warwick. Ooh, Warwick will pounce to the other side of Aurelia, and that's gonna cause Aurelia's ulti to miss. He's going to turn it around with the last of the rest, but is it gonna be enough? No, not even close to being enough. Without the Mystic and just the Bork, Miss Fortune, not Miss Fortune, Aurelia completes the domination smash of the Warwick. Just, he's just so incredibly far behind that everything from here just seems like a formality for the Aurelia. Red team has yet to kill a tower. They have yet to, uh,. Well, they took one dragon, but they've yet to take a herald, I believe. And they've been pigeonholed inside their own base. And it's a very tight and cramped space. They demand air, they demand freedom. But uh, they can't really quite walk out. Misfortune has a Gale Force out defensively. Bullet time lasts exactly one way before the Vayne kills are off, and the Echo in the back gets picked off as well. Red Team may have found a tiny grasp at life by picking off two members here. And unfortunately, Misfortune didn't double up the main. Gale forced away, ulted once, and then died. And it seems like Red Team's response right now is immediate desperation Baron. But I'm not sure if they can kill this fast enough. Vayne is not strong enough yet. Teleport coming out the back. Irelia has arrived onto the scene already. Ras is quickly making his way into the pit. 3,000 health remaining. It does seem like Red Team might get this. They do get this, but not before Seraphine lands the biggest encore ever. They uh, stun down the three, and Ras is busy fighting too. Meanwhile, Irelia kills the dog because that's the only thing she's been doing for the whole game. Ras survives the 1v2 ordeal. The beautiful dash of the side, but unfortunately, Sinjar might kill him off. No, he will not. Yes, he will. Lux walks a little bit too close to the blade wall. She might get chipped down here. The burn is there. The red buff kills her off. Triple kill going to the Aurelia. Red team might have secured Baron, but they came out with less gold. On they, they lost gold off that. They don't get the Baron buff at all. And they drop a lot more bodies. If you take Baron and then you get aced by more than two people, you just lost gold. You, like, the, the enemy team gets more gold than you do. Red team will lose their 4th tower, their 5th one is probably soon to follow if nobody comes up top to stop the Aurelia. Doesn't seem like anybody will. Try for it complete on the RL, of course it is. I've seen Triforce and Sunderer in equal measure. Sunderer doesn't make too much sense here because, yeah, Aurelia can cut through the dog very easily. Echo drops the parallel conversions. He's trying to make a play happen. Nope. That bubble goes way wide onto the Vayne. He's going to tackle the Gromp instead. And Vayne is a very nice soul and she will help him leash it. Kane drops the Herald. Probably because he's expiring. And just sends it running down mid. Probably not the best lane. You, I mean, give him more time. He probably just send a bot for more efficiency. But this works too. This is essentially a naked base push. They don't have Baron to help. They're still going up against wave clear. Lux can stall this wave and they can kill the Herald. Yeah, blue team is just not in a position to assist this push and this Herald is going to die for nothing. But this might be the start of a team fight that they wanted. Encore hits one, but the laser kills off the misfortune. Blue team loses their first member. They might lose a second. I really is in the thick of it all. The vein gets picked up by the Echo in the back, and that is going to be a total watch. Red teams realize they lost their damage, which means this is a full retreat mode, but not without dropping everybody they have. Only Lux as the super backline is not in the danger. So she will make it out safe and sound for now. But how safe and sound can you be? Honestly, at this point, Misfortune is just a sacrificial lamb. <laughs> as long as you keep the Seraphine alive, she's winning the team fights for you. Like, she has damage, don't get me wrong, Miss Fortune has damage. She just doesn't have enough <laughs> compared to like everybody else on her team. And at this point, you just sacrifice the MF every fight and be like, hey guys, kill the ADC and we win the fight. She could build tank here and nobody would care. <laughs> Echo kills the tower, but he trades his life for it. 
decidedly not worth that 600 gold given over to the Warwick. However, it is the Warwick, so it's probably no harm. Inferno Drake up in two and a half minutes. Too far away to matter. I I have a feeling this game ends in less time than that. Pass is going to recall for some more items. It seems like blue team here, they can't really try another naked push, uh, not into red team's wave clear, so they're going to wait for the next major objective. It's going to be in their best interest to secure the next Baron spawning, roughly at the same time as Infernal Drake. They will more than happily give up Infernal Drake if it means they secure Baron. It's... It's a game-ending objective for them. It's their win condition right now, to drive a Baron buff wave straight into the heart of red team's base and take them out. Inferno Drake up in 90. Baron's up in basically exactly the same time. And Seraphine standing still in the mid lane, admiring, her, admiring herself. I have 6 kills, damn I'm good. No sorry, 8 kills, damn I'm good. So far, red team, they're trying to buy time, but as time is going by, blue team is getting disproportionately stronger than them still. This isn't necessarily a game where red team can win by turtling. Other than Bane, everybody else just becomes more and more irrelevant with time. Warwick is going to ult away for his own safety, so that's going to be infinite rest gone. I wonder if it's still called that, actually. Hold on. It is actually still called that, wow. I remember back when they just like blink you across space time to your target. Lux Laser somehow still hits the IRL, I think, or that might have been Vayne's damage. So the IRL is going to trade one for one, and this might be the very, very awkward start to a team fight. Death Sentence lands onto the Rask, controlling him for a while, but not before he breaks out of it and lands the knockup onto the Warwick, and suddenly all of Red Team's members are now behind the Blue Team's Siege. The Blaze, uh, Blaze Reach will not hit. The Sin Zhao, he's going to ult flash over to kill the MF, but Seraphine takes him down with an Encore. Yet another sacrifice to the gods to get Seraphine even more kills. Sin Zhao calls the premature GG on behalf of his team. He sees the writing on the wall, he probably saw it 20 minutes ago, honestly. As a blue team, they will take the win. Most certainly the win. That team still has some left in them. Warwick is paying out the teleport. He says he has it. He wants to teleport to catch the stragglers leaving the base, but it's too late. No, he's still doing it? No, blue team's already fully disengaged. What are you doing? This is death! He comes in to just be rooted, airborne, set on fire. He can't make a pick happen, but there's the infinite arrest, but he can barely even do half of Seraphine's life bar. Seraphine's just going to shield and try to walk away, but Warwick finally gets the prey he's been looking for. Meanwhile, the Echo gets killed off as well on the side. Unrelated incidents left and right. Lux! Ooh, actually makes that kill happen. Iral comes in as reinforcements only to be immediately killed off. All the time is the next bullet line of defense, but only to be interrupted by the death sentence. What is going on? Blue team is coming about him so hard for no reason. Rass is the last man standing, but that's not good enough. Red team aces. Oh my goodness. I just called the end of the game like less than a minute ago. But red team aced. They actually found all the stragglers. And blue team trying to save their stragglers trickle back one by one and they run into a five-man meat grinder what an insane turn to this well not turn i'm pretty sure red team's still screwed but what an insane cleanup fight i certainly didn't expect it to go nearly as well as it did they got essentially the best outcome and they get baron and dragon and a five for nothing Baron Recall is going to get all of them out in the nick of time! Yep. Echo pounces in, finds no targets. And suddenly, Red Team once again for the second time wearing purple. 
they have a ticket to win. I cannot believe it. <laughs> can you just the can just smile? He got the goal, I think. Can just swoop in and smoke the grump. And suddenly blue team, they're put into a very defensive position. They need to save up this Baron push. They need to make a team fight happen, but it seems like they're all here. And at least for now, they're still very strong compared to red team. They can make this fight happen. <laughs> as long as there aren't any more pesky conveyor belts lying around the factory. They can certainly still meet their production quota of one victory. Lux later goes wide. That might be the signal for blue team to engage. Condemn sends Raxon to the wall. Warwick goes in for a pounce, but he gets immediately denied. Echo drops very low onto the side. Ras jumps into the vein to try to assassinate her, but can't he get it? Yes, he can! The shutdown is there. Red team has lost a significant chunk of their damage, but where's the rest of blue team? That was a 2v5 for all intents and purposes. <laughs> Nobody else was there to collapse in time. They were being zoned off by an unknown threat. And that team fight started somewhat half assly and ended with just one kill taken by blue team onto the vein. They get the shutdown gold and they force red team back and deny their push. They do get one tower. That's better than nothing. Like they do have one tower I should say. It's better than zero. <clears throat> but at this point they need a lot more. They need to not get caught out here like this on the encore. Misfortune gets a kill onto the doggy. The doggy pings out Seraphine's ultimate, but honestly, at this point, it doesn't even matter. It's now Red Team making the siege happen yet again. Unfortunately, they don't have Baron, and they're up against the Lux, so this siege fizzles out on contact. It is DOA. Red Team uh, making it close, while well, they're still hovering at a 6k deficit for what seems like this, uh, the dawn of humanity, but. They're still technically in it. They, they haven't lost yet. The combo gets cancelled. The Death Sanders hooks in the Rast. The Rast doesn't have any chance. He gets completely killed off here. Irelia's in the middle of it all. She's trying to fight, but she's just passing back and forth. She's the next to go. Oh, Vayne is making the kills happen, and the rest of her team is providing the CC. Red team gets her inhibitor up. Blue team, they've been battered and bruised yet again. Can Echo make it happen? He has no chrono break. He's dropping the power on convergence. No, he pops the Blast Cone. He's out of there. Red team gets her in hit back. The surrender wall for red team fails. I think they see a glimmering light at the end of the tunnel. However faint it is, it is a light regardless. They essentially prolong the timer of their loss by at least 5 minutes by taking all those objectives. But the next set of objectives are spawning real freaking soon. Dragon's coming up in 1 minute, Baron's coming up in 2 minutes after that. So red team, have they garnered enough of a lead to make a difference? He's trying to click on the lantern, but he's also attacking the ward. He finally grabs it, but it's not enough. Misfortune kills him off before he makes it back with a laser at the least the Seraphine. Vayne will be killed off. That's a lot of the damage gone. The Lux laser, it doesn't reset anymore, but it's still a hell of a low cooldown. Irel tries to dive back, but she's been controlled. The Thresh is the sacrificial lamp. Warwick is next to go. He's in the middle of four. Lux cannot provide support. That is going to be four bodies on the ground. And that is certainly... That's certainly the end of the game, right? You have a four-man strong push, a single Lux cannot stop this. There is no way a Lux can stop this. Oh, that recall. Not cancelled. If that recall is cancelled, it will be the end of the game for sure. But now Lux actually makes it back home in time to defend. That's a huge chunk of damage, she kills the rest! Oh. Lux kills the rest. And Irel diving back, her ultimate gets blocked out by the Zion's Hourglass. They wreck the base down to the Nexus, but Irel dies in her dive. Misfortune has a double back to the Dragon Pit. They throw two more bodies into Red Team's base, but they're getting closer. Oh no, Echo's dead! Oh, Blue Team secures the Drake. They put themselves on Soul Point. Baron's up in 50 seconds. They, 
Clear the world around Baron. This is in their best interest to secure. They must get this. I don't think they can stomach this game being dragged down for 7 more minutes. If red team secures this Baron. Oh, the Warwick pounds over the wall. He locks onto the Seraphine scent. Probably from all that perfume she's spraying for the K-pop group. The Encore goes through. It only locks up the one doggy. He makes his way back. The Ras is not quite done with him. He jumps inside the vein for the assassination. But vein is still very healthy. Kane's probably made a horrible mistake. He's going to get kited out. The blaze reaches not enough. The deletion is through. Misfortune gets wrecked by the laser. They might have just lost. I think they just lost. Red team might have done it. Blue team's base is collapsing at the seams. They only have two defenders. Red team pings everybody back. They're going for Baron. They're going to get the Baron. Oh my goodness, 10 minutes ago I heralded the end for Red Team. And it seems that was premature. Baron Nasher is alive, it will not be for long. Red Team is now sufficiently strong enough to just reduce this thing to butter. Oh, unless Vayne gets popped like that, Echo just jumps into her face and kills her. Baron Asher is slain. Echo, his, he has one drop. Stop these backs. He needs to throw his body in. But no, it is not enough. Three of them make it back in time. How is the base looking? Irelia still trying to make the game end. But it's not enough. She gets deleted by the laser. Not enough damage. Not enough recalls cancelled. But so far, this is a four on three. Red team, they have one man down. Can Baron Buff be their fourth man? It doesn't look like it will be. Blue team sees it. This is their... Probably last chance to end the game. If this push gets staved off, they might not see the space ever again. Death sentence comes in, it gets tanked out by the Rast game. This is not a good time to freeze. Game? Don't do this to me. Rito, I need to see the end of this game. What what are you doing? Don't freeze on me. No. Oh. <laughs> I'm just going to say they won. Let me try... Hold on. Okay, they did win. But what I'm going to do is download the replay and play it back. I want to see if this game ends. I, I want to see if that was it. I want to see if that was the push that ends the game. All right, we're back. Okay, what was that moment? Let me see. Well, the timeline is stretching pretty close. I'm pretty sure. Okay, yeah, that was the end of the game. Let's 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 rewind for a bit. <laughs> the Nexus is just. <laughs> okay, well, the Nexus is in ruins, but we'll see. Cast right here. Aatrox tanks the hook. He's in. It's not Aatrox. It's Ras, but it doesn't matter. And yep, that does indeed the end of the game. GG to Blue Team. They secured a win in third volume.